Let's talk about the catcher position next on Fantasy Baseball Today in 5. Welcome into FBT in 5. As always, make sure to follow and stream us on Spotify. Today is Tuesday, October 12th. I am Frank Stanfield, joined by Scott White, and you can find Scott's top 20 ranked catchers for the 2022 season right now on cbsports.com. But for today, we're only going to look at the top 12, and let's focus with the top half of that. That is Salvador Perez, number one. JT Real Muto, number two. Will Smith is third. Dalton Varsho, that's right. Dalton Varsho is fourth. Yasmani Grandal is fifth. And Buster Posey is sixth at the position. Scott, let's start up top with Salvador Perez. Obviously, just had an amazing season. 48 homers, 121 RBI. How far does he have to fall in drafts next year for you to actually consider drafting him? Well, I don't think he'll actually last round five, but that might be when I consider taking him. And it's it's just because I really don't like investing in the position. Um, there's so much, so much that they get exposed to, so much injury risk and uh, performance risk because of the the beating they take back there and. You know, everybody kind of has a bad catcher anyway, so I don't mind having a bad catcher. But like, it makes sense. Uh, He had one of the best seasons for a catcher ever. He led the majors in two of the three triple crown categories, home runs and RBI. And you you just don't see catchers do anything like that ever. And on top of it, he was the number one catcher in 2020 as well. We didn't really make much of it because it was such a short season, but that's two years in a row. I think uh, I think far and away we should think of him as the number one catcher in fantasy now, even though he's old. All right, Scott. When was the last time you went for a checkup here? Because look, you have Dalton Varsho fourth overall. I've got to make sure that that everything is all right here. What's going on? Why is Dalton Varsho ranked this high for next season? Well, I, I mean, it starts with how he performed, <laughs> how he performed down the stretch last season. Former top prospect. Obviously, uh, got off to a really ugly start in the majors, both in 2020 and this year. But then in the second half this year, 290 batting average, 10 home runs, five steals, 879 OPS. So that's the starting point. It's just, I think he's good. But then beyond that, he does things that no other catcher can do. He's so athletic. He, I, I mentioned he had five steals in the second half. Stealing bases was something he did in the minors as well. And he, plays the outfield and not just the outfield. He plays center field for the Diamondbacks uh, on days he's not catching. And considering they're in a development stage as a franchise, I, I don't see why they wouldn't play him a ton between catcher and outfield. So I expect a playing time advantage. I expect him to be one of maybe only two catchers to deliver a, a solid steals total. And, uh, you know, other than Salvador Perez, he might have as much upside as anyone at the position. Yeah, I'm actually with you. I like Dalton Varsho. I just, you know, I just put on a little bit of show. Uh, in points show. leagues, I might take Yasmani Grandal <laughs> ahead of him, just to be clear. But, but yeah. All right, so let's move on to your seven through twelve in the rankings. Wilson Contreras is seventh. Caber Ruiz is eighth. Then Mike Zanino, Gary Sanchez, Mitch Garver, and Alejandro Kirk with the Toronto Blue Jays. Caber uh, Ruiz, Scotty, goes over to the Washington Nationals. Seems like he's going to be there. Everyday catcher, at least we assume, for next year. Can you see a breakout season coming for Cabot Ruiz? I could. I mean, he broke out as a power hitter in the minors this past year, hitting over 20 home runs in uh, basically like a, a half half a major league season's worth of games. So, you know, we didn't know if he would ever develop that kind of power. We knew he made tons of contact, and uh, he did both in the minors and the majors this year, struck out less than 10% of the time. And that's unbelievable for any player, much less a catcher. So I think he's going to get a lot of playing time for the Nationals. He's not going to strike out much. That gives him a very high floor at a position where it doesn't take much to to be relevant. And if he does, if he does show power in the majors next year too, then he could be huge. Yeah, and someone else that I think could be huge for next season is Alejandro Kirk, who you do have ranked 12th here. And he was basically the biggest underachiever by every metric that you look at on StatCast this past season at the catcher position. So we know that he can be, hopefully, great offensively, but he still has work to do defensively. And it's because of that where I think his floor is is lower than other names on this list, uh, just because of playing time. 
Yeah, Mitch Garver and, and Alejandro Kirk both. The reason I have them 11th and 12th behind guys like Gary Sanchez, Mike Zunino, even Gabriel Ruiz. I mean, I like the upside of Kirk and, and Garver more. It's just, will they get enough playing time? And that's a question for a lot at the catcher position. You know, that that's half the battle at a position where guys get regular uh, regular days off is not just do they have the ability to be a, an impactful player in fantasy, but will they get that opportunity? And I have major questions both for Kirk, who splits at bats with two different catchers on the Blue Jays, and Mitch Garver, who has had issues staying healthy, and even when he was healthy, he was only playing like half the time for the Twins. For more extensive fantasy baseball coverage, listen to the Fantasy Baseball Today podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, your smart speakers, or anywhere else podcasts are found. And thanks for listening to Fantasy Baseball Today in 5. If you enjoyed the pod, please leave a five-star review on Apple. We'll be back again on Thursday morning. Bye-bye. <laughs> 